insecticides. I only have one real insecticide that I spray, and this starts at the time of plum curculio control, just after blossom, and it goes really through summer and controls most everything from codling moth to apple maggot uh, to the, the plum curculio. Those are the big three that I control with it. It gets a few other critters as well. Um, Japanese beetles does a pretty good job with those. Um, that is a sale. We've talked about that in a previous video. It's a very expensive insecticide, has done a great job for me. You use very little of it uh, in a backyard orchard like I've got. Um, very little of this goes a long, long way. So if you've got apple growing friends, it would be good to everybody pool together and get some a sale and everybody split it up and it's still gonna last you for years. And it's a very effective product. Next, Dipel DF. So what this is, is a leaf roller insecticide. It's, it's actually organic, you can spray it. Um, it's a bacteria it, and organic orchards do use it. But it's a bacteria that those worms will ingest and it kills them from the inside out. So I had a, a terrible time with leaf rollers just a few years ago and started spraying this and it was very effective. I don't spray it every spray. I maybe put it in every other, every one out of three and it's done a pretty good job. Not real cheap. I think this bag was $30, but uh, this bag goes a long way. Uh, the rates aren't real high. And again, I'm not gonna get into what the rates are. So those are my insecticides. That's basically it. My insecticide arsenal is not nearly as large as my fungicide arsenal. Let's talk for a minute about fire blight. Fire blight is something that can affect you uh, you'll notice it right about now for me here in southern Indiana. May 30th, you start to see fire blight show up. And I'm a little uneasy every time I go out into the orchard right now. I'm afraid I'm going to see some fire blight. Didn't have a stitch of it last year. Five, six years ago, I thought I was done growing apples. It was so bad. Largely, what's taking care of fire blight for me is the... Cupro 5000, this is copper hydroxide. You spray it in the dormant season, just as you're starting to get a little bit of green on those apple trees, you spray your Cupro 5000. This is copper. This used to be considered an organic spray. I don't believe it is anymore, but it was. It's not good for the soil. Um, doesn't really hurt much, but earthworms aren't real fond of it. So I didn't spray any of it this year. I wanted to go a year without it and we'll see if that's hurt me or not here any day. The other item in the lineup that I have for um, fire blight is this product, streptomycin. Streptomycin was also an organic spray, I believe until just recently again, and it fell off the organic spray list. But streptomycin works like this. Apple trees bloom, the fire blight bacteria often enters, usually enters the apple tree through the blossom carried by insects. You spray this on the blossom. This is a competing bacteria. So you spray this on the blossom as soon as they open up and continue to spray through blossom. And the idea is you beat the fire blight bacteria to the blossom. And once this populates and sort of controls that blossom, this bacteria, it does not allow the fire blight bacteria to grow. So between the copper and the streptomycin, uh, I have all but eliminated fire blight in this orchard. It takes constant vigilance. Okay, two more items. Uh, another, another organic spray here. Okay, this is a calcium spray, cow power. Um, I do believe it helps with uh, bitter pit. Um, I spray it right now. I'll really spray it throughout the summer. Right now is the big time to spray it when the apples are 
quarter size. This is when you really want to be putting this on and helping to eliminate some of that bitter rot by getting those calcium levels increased. It does have some nitrogen in it too, so that helps as a spray, those trees can take that in on the leaves. Um, not a real expensive product and a little bit goes a long way in the spray bottle. And then lastly, how do we get all that stuff to stay on the tree? Right now I'm using pinene too. Uh, just think of this as pine sap, okay? You mix this with water and it makes a little slurry. And then this goes into the sprayer with your other chemicals. And this helps to stick it on the tree so when you get a rain, it doesn't just immediately wash off. It'll hold it there. It does a great job, great job. Uh, the only thing about pinene too I don't like, it is sticky. It, anything outside the sprayer, uh, you get it on your your mower, it is sticky. It's sticky on the bottle, it's sticky on your hands, so just gotta be careful of handling it, but it's a good product. So that's what sticks it all. Very important to have a sticker, spreader, with your chemicals that holds it on the tree. So that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? It sure is. And I don't like spraying a drop of it. But if I didn't, my apples wouldn't look very good. And I wouldn't get very many. That's just the truth of it. And the zone I live in, the, the Midwest, uh, the, the heat and the humidity of summer really harbors the, fun the fungal issues. Uh, the insects often have more life cycles than they do in the north. And so you've got to continue to fight them throughout the summer, which means more spray. So it's a challenge to spray all of these things all summer long. So, so what I really want to do is get better at timing my sprays when I do have an issue. I want to start measuring the insect populations and there are ways to do that so that I know the peak time to spray and then when I can stop spraying for that particular insect rather than just randomly hitting the orchard after every two inches of rain or 10 to 14 days, whatever it might be. So that's about it. There's a lot to think about there. You wouldn't be wrong to get an insecticide and a fungicide and just go from there and, and see what that does for you. If you've just got a couple of trees, that's gonna go a long way in helping you get some nice, pretty apples. So uh, I hope this helped. Uh, look at those documents that I had. Look these chemicals up online. See if you might be interested in and getting some of those for your home orchard, they do a great job. They're professional chemicals. That's what I call them. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. Um, we're gonna go look at some grass. I'm tired of talking about chemicals. Let's go look at some grass.